Hello everybody and welcome to the last thinkers and tankers of the month and of the summer. So after this, Summer Reading Club is getting started. So make sure you keep a lookout, register and read your summer away to win some fun prizes and get in on some cool activities. We'll have more on that later. So for today, we are doing our Caterpillar Butterfly Rearing Kits. So this is very exciting. These kits we have procured from uh, Butterfly Wings and Wishes up in Edmonton, and they are going to be painted lady butterflies. These are gonna start off as bugs. <laughs> so take care of them, they are living creatures. We have this handout with all the instructions that you need in order how to care for them and turn them into butterflies. We've also posted a link on uh, an extended project on what to do if you would like to keep your butterflies instead of releasing them and how to procure eggs from them so you can start the cycle all over again. So that takes a little more dedication but it is absolutely an option as long as you make sure to read up on it and you know what you're doing and you get all the supplies that you need. Now, these butterflies are native to our area. They have lots of food that they can munch on and procure. So they will integrate into our ecosystem. So that's not always the case with butterfly releases, but our friends are very responsible and knowledgeable and they know what they're doing and they want to help sustain our fun friends. So, like I said, these are living creatures and they don't have a 100% survival rate. In nature, there is not a 100% survival rate and a lot of babies and, inf and young animals do not make it all the way to adulthood. So you guys are getting two caterpillars or larvae in your kits to rear so that your chances go up. Also, because we are creating our own environment for them and it's nice and safe, and they're not gonna have any predators, their rates have, go from one to 5%, which it would be in the wild, to 70 to 90% the way we're doing it. So we have some really good chances here. So, um, some of the information you're gonna need about the release of your butterflies is that um, <laughs> make sure you pick good weather conditions. If you decide, hey, I'm gonna release them tomorrow and you go outside and there's smog or it started hailing or snowing, you know, those aren't good conditions. So make sure you're picking a nice day that doesn't have a lot of smoke or storms and that'll be a nice time to let your butterflies go. Okay, so let's do some butterfly facts. So the population of butterflies has decreased over the last few decades. So why is that? Climate change, pesticides and herbicide use. I always want to say deforestation, but it's loss of natural habitat in this case. So, in the 90s, specifically, a lot of natural green spaces were kind of bulldozed over and paved. So, that definitely con contributed to their populations being hurt. Um, herbicides and pesticides are used by both commercial landscaping and homeowner, home, home owners. And so, the idea that green spaces should look a certain way. So your lawns, instead of letting them be natural, everybody wants them to look pretty. <laughs> so my backyard, for example, grows wild. And this is not what all people want. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure that when some neighbors look over my fence, they think I'm crazy. But I really like having the nat 
the natural environment there. My dogs love it. When the kids were young, they used to hide in the long grass and play games, and it was like a little jungle. So we had a lot of natural plants and things growing. We had a section where it could all grow wild just to help with the natural space and our local ecosystem just a little bit. Um, so, why are pollinators important? Which butterflies are a pollinator? Apparently once upon a time, this was questioned, but they are. And so plants that, plants and flowers, especially fruiting trees and stuff, um, they rely roughly 80% on animals and insects to pollinate. So the pollen has to go from one plant to another, to another, to another, to another, in order for them to be healthy and produce. And so the wind will do some of that work for some plants, but 80%, a big chunk, needs that help. And while bees are our number one pollinators, butterflies are important too. <laughs> so, a couple other fun facts. So, I don't know if this is still said, but when I was a kid, we were told, never touch a butterfly's wings. So if you caught a butterfly, never touch its wings because you would get that dust on your fingers and it would come off. And if you got that dust, if you took their dust away, they couldn't fly. You were gonna damage their wings and they wouldn't be able to fly. So this is in fact a myth. And turns out, I didn't know this until I started looking this up for you guys, a butterfly's wings are made up of tiny, tiny scales. And that dust are their scales. So they naturally shed their scales throughout their lifetime. And so it's the dead scales that are coming off in this dust. The dust are just the little tiny scales that they have shed. Isn't that interesting? Now their wings are still delicate. So be careful and don't just run out and go and try and grab a butterfly's wings. We don't want that. But it's not as devastating as I was taught or told that it would be. So, fun fact. Uh, the largest butterfly is the Queen Alexandra birdwing in, and they live in Papua New Guinea and they have a wingspan of 11 inches. Pretty cool, huh? So nectar is their primary food source and they, use, they have really long tongues. If you've ever seen a hummingbird eat, think like that. And they reach down to the bottom of the flower where the nectar is hiding to drink that up and their legs get full of the pollen because they have to stand in it. And so when they go to eat, they travel and bring the pollen around with them on their little legs. Um, so camouflage is one of their means of protecting themselves. So for different butterflies, this looks like different things. Um, some, the one that I thought was the most interesting was this one particular type of butterfly their, their larva, so they're young, are actually designed to look like bird poop. Because who would want to eat bird poop? No one, not very appealing. Um, <laughs> and there's one of their other protection methods is that they will eat certain, certain things that they eat have a slight toxicity level to them. Not to them personally, but to birds. Birds are one of their main prey. And so if a blue jay, for example, if they eat a monarch butterfly, they will throw up for hours. And studies have shown that they only need to eat a butterfly once in their life to never try to eat them again. So that, uh, so making themselves toxic to other animals really uh, can save a lot of others other butterflies' lives 
because they're no longer appealing as a food source. I think it would be kind of similar to if you ate something once and it tasted disgusting. You really don't want to eat that food again, so you're just going to avoid it. All right, guys, I think that's all the talking I will do for today. Uh, I hope you learned something. I really follow the instructions on this kit. Uh, it's very important. These are living creatures and we need to take good care of them. I am going to show you guys how to make your flight cages now. So this is something you can work on while you are hatching your larvae and they are forming their chrysalis uh, because this is what they're going to get transferred into. It is super, super important that you do not use a glass jar. Get yourself a good sturdy cardboard box with no slippery bits. Make sure you follow the instructions here. We will provide the extra stuff. You provide the cardboard box, all right? All right, here we go. All right, guys, so Lily and I are going to show you how you can turn the cardboard box into a flight cage. What's gonna hold the flight? Um, What's gonna be held in our flight cage? Um, it's gonna be, be a larva and then it's gonna grow up into a caterpillar and then a butterfly. Right, so we're, when our caterpillar has made itself its chrysalis, it's That's going to get <laughs> transferred into our flight cage. But first, we need to make it a little bit nicer. So ours is going to stand up on its end like this. So we're going to use the front panel and the bottom panel. Hey mom. Yes. Um, we need to make sure for our uh, um, butterfly we need some air to breathe. Exactly. So what we have here, we have a pencil, a ruler, an X-Acto blade, and a pair of scissors, as well as some beautiful colors of tulle. So this is extremely breathable and it will be great. So on your cardboard box, we're going to take the width of a ruler and draw around. So we want two, about two inches to either side so that our cardboard box doesn't um, lose its structural integrity. So, like that. Now, very carefully, you're going to pull your blade up. Make you're sure going to have, have a cutting have mat. A parent supervision with the exacto blade. Right. And so Lily is going to take the ruler. We're going to hold it nice. And you ever, are you supposed to cut towards yourself or away from yourself? Away away. So, if I'm going like this, is that good or bad? Bad. Uh oh. What could happen? Uh, you could cut yourself. You could cut yourself. You could slip. You could cut yourself. So, cut away. Uh-oh, uh, -oh, uh -oh. nope. Don't cut there. We're cutting our inside box. Okay? So we're going to cut there? Yeah. Okay. And you're going to stop. Oh. Okay. My hands are wet. So, make sure you know where you're cutting. Start at one point, push, and stop. You need to be in control of your blade. Let's try again. Good job. 
Okay. So now what we have is a perfectly cut out box. And you could do another patch here if you wanted. Uh, we're going to stick with just these two for now. So I guess we could even sit our box like that if we really wanted to. I thought we'd have it up like this, but it could be like this. I guess it doesn't matter. Yeah. All right, so Lily, what color should we use? Uh, this is gonna be green. Ooh, we're gonna green. use a green. Um, a gold. We also have red and white. I feel silver. like red and, and and silver is white. I thought we were gonna do a green. Ooh, uh, even though it's not the holidays, right? oh, but okay. I'm going but. with. All right, so you guys will have some combination of the two colors in yours. So, we're going to, whoop, do that right there. Perfect. So we have a little measure here. Make sure when you guys are doing it, we're going to give you an ample amount of tool in your kits for you to use. Just make sure that you don't, if you have a super big box, Make sure that you don't cut a bigger hole than a square of fabric that we have. It looks like light red. It's very important that we use this gauzy or tulle material and not something else like, you know, quilting cotton. That's not gonna work. <laughs> so do be careful with your glue gun. They are hot. Um, you could also use duct tape, but like I said, we do have a supply of glue guns available to loan out here at the library. So in order to not touch the hot glue, because this fabric's really thin, remember, so if you put a line of glue down and you go to push it down with your hands, what's gonna happen? It's gonna burn. It, it's likely gonna burn. So I just grabbed a clothespin to help us push down the fabric. All right, Lily Bean, let's see you go. Butterflies like to eat? What? So they like nectar, but what fruit do they really like to eat? I feel like I've been, I know this, but I can't, and, and like, like, spit it out. I, I don't know can't what it, it is. They really like orange slices. And I think, I think, 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 the other one is pieces of watermelon. So like the rinds of the watermelon with just that little bit of red left on it, of the flesh, I think they like that. It's easy for them to drink up the tasty juices. So part one is done. So now you need to do part two. Silver. silver. Yep, our silver. So this is the one we gotta reach in for. And that's nice and tight along there. Do you want to give that a try? So no escaping. We don't want a beautiful butterfly to escape. Okay. So we now have a nice safe container flight cage for our butterflies. So when they turn into their chrysalis in the containers that we give you, you're going to pop the lid off and very carefully, being sure not to get any glue on the chrysalis, you're gonna put some hot glue. Careful. Sorry. You're gonna burn yourself. Okay. So you're gonna put some hot glue at the top of the cage. So right here, and then you're gonna put the lid on. And then we seal up our box. 
And there we go. And from here you can watch it. And when it turns into a when it comes out of its cocoon and turns into a butterfly, oh, I wonder if this way would be better. I guess we'll decide that after. Yeah. But this is big enough that we can have a little plant inside and we can put our pieces of fruit in there and we can still watch everything that goes on. So make sure you take some observations, record what you see. Take care guys. Enjoy your summer.